Christ United Methodist Church. Let's stand this morning and join with the hymn, This Is My Father's World, on this beautiful Father's Day. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, my best Well, good morning, Skycrest. I want to welcome you all here. Uh, if you are in person, uh, we are glad that you have taken time to be here with us. Whether you are a uh, member or a longtime attender, I uh, want to say welcome. Or perhaps you are a first-time visitor, maybe in town uh, visiting family, or you are looking for a church home. We want to say we are glad that you are here. And to those that have joined us online, uh, we thank you for uh, being with us this morning. Wherever here is for you today, we are grateful that this can be our here uh, together. A couple of announcements that we have. Uh, if you can go ahead and please fill out your, um, your blue connect card in your bulletin, that will be really helpful. If you're online, you can visit skycrest.net slash here. This lets us know who you are, how we can be uh, praying for you, as well as any ways you might like to connect with the church or any questions you may have about Skycrest. If you're in person, you can fill this out and drop it off in the offering box outside of the worship space also want to say a word about giving. Um, every time we gather, we remind ourselves uh, that we have received so many gifts and blessings from God. Amen? Scripture tells us every good gift comes from God. And we know that, um, that we have blessing after blessing after blessing. And so we give back just a portion of what God has given to us. The ministry we have here at Skycrest is made possible because uh, of your giving. And so uh, if you brought your gift with you, you can drop it off in the offering box outside of the worship space, you can go to uh, skycrest.net slash giving, uh, or in just a moment, there's a, uh, a number that you can text the amount you would like to give uh, to the number you see on the screen. All of those allow us to respond to the gifts that God, or to the call that God has given uh, to us. 
As a reminder, the uh, needs drive for the Florida United Methodist Children's Home is continuing to go on. Uh, many of you have asked me questions about that. Some folks have said, hey, what about these items? Do you need those? Um, thank you for asking about that. Any questions you have specifically, I'm happy to answer, but I know Lena and Dion Hancock are happy to answer those questions as well as the children's home representatives. You'll see the list on the screen, although it's, I'm sure it's a bit small for those in the back. You can also go to our website, um, but please continue to bring those in. You can bring them in on Sunday mornings, you can bring them in throughout the week, or you can also bring them with you as you accompany the Hancocks and everybody who is going on the trip to the children's home on Friday, July 15th. That will not only be a chance to take the items out there, but also to get a tour. If you are interested uh, in going, please let Lena or Dion know by July 1st. That will give them a chance to make sure they've got transportation and all the logistics squared away. So please let them know by the 1st. That will be wonderful. And I can tell you, I'm biased because I used to serve there, but it is a wonderful place, and I think everybody needs to see it. It, it makes a difference when you can put your hands on the ministry. So I encourage you to, uh, to pray about going, but please continue to get those items items in through July 3rd. Uh, as a reminder, we are having our uh, farewell party for Joe Scarborough next uh, Sunday. I can't believe it's next Sunday already. Uh, after the traditional service, uh, that's the 26th, right after the traditional service in the uh, modern worship space. So it'll be a potluck, uh, so we'll provide kind of the mains, but if anybody has a side dish they'd like to bring, you can drop it off in the fellowship hall before the service. It'll be a great time to come and celebrate Joe, and there'll be uh, lots of time for us to offer well wishes. I'm sure funny stories are always welcomed. Uh, I.e., if you have a funny story, I'd love for you to share it. So, uh, but that'll be a great time together uh, to celebrate Joe. Uh, as a reminder, and I joked with Carrie this morning, I know she just got back from Costa Rica. She and the whole group got back in safely, had a wonderful week. Um, so thank you as a church for continuing to keep them in prayer. Everything went really well. I told Caitlin uh, yesterday, once she told me they were back stateside, I said, I'm glad everybody had a great time. I can't wait for us to talk more about it. So you will be hearing more about the trip um, soon. But I was joking with Carrie that, yeah, you just got back from Costa Rica and camp is in a couple weeks. But camp, uh, our kids will be going to the Warren Willis Methodist camp June 20. 27th through July 2nd. So please be praying for them, praying for the staff at the camp. It is a wonderful place. That's how I kind of, one of the ways I felt my call into ministry. So it is great work that is being done there. So please keep them in prayer. As a reminder, um, Vacation Bible School registration is up and live. So if you your kids or grandkids or anybody, neighbor's kids that want to be a part of it, have them register. Um, that'll be a great time in July for us to have VBS. And then please let Carrie know if you're interested in volunteering. We've had some folks sign up for that, so thank you. But we are still in need of plenty of folks to help with volunteering. So let her know that is in July. Tonight there will be a Father's Day movie night um, at uh, 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. If you are interested in coming, bringing dad, stepdad, father figure, uh, anybody you want to bring, that would be great. Um, but if you know you want to come, please let Carrie know because we're trying to get our logistics together about how many folks to expect. So that is tonight at five. I will say I put this in my midweek message, but the office will be closed tomorrow um, in observance of Juneteenth. Now, if you're like me, you may not have known much about Juneteenth until a couple of years ago, uh, but Juneteenth actually commemorates the um, kind of official awareness of everybody of the end of slavery. Uh, it was a, on this date that slaves in Texas, uh, months and months after the Emancipation Proclamation was already signed, still didn't know that they were freed. And so it's a really powerful holiday. There are celebrations going on all around, but it was signed into law as a federal holiday last year. So we will be closed uh, tomorrow, uh, but it's a reminder of the steps we've taken as a country as well as the work we continue to have to do uh, with race relations. So we will be closed tomorrow. If you call um, tomorrow, we will return it on Tuesday. Um, I do want to say uh, a special word uh, to the fathers and father figures. Uh, happy Father's Day. I know this, like Mother's Day, is a day filled with many emotions. Many of us uh, think back on great relationships we've had with our dads, or as, as fathers, we think about relationships we've had with our kids. Um, some of us, this is also a difficult day. Maybe we've lost our father or our father figure. Maybe we didn't have a great relationship with our fathers. Or maybe uh, as a father, we've had a strained relationship with our children. Uh, maybe this is a time where we remember loss in our lives of fathers or children. So uh, I will tell you, wherever you are in those emotions on this day, it is all appropriate and very much welcomed. And so um, may we trust uh, and may you find hope that we serve a God who is a perfect parent. 
Uh, may that give us hope. May that guide us in all that we do. And may we continue to strive uh, to be the people who serve as those uh, mother and father figures uh, for those who need that. And finally, I'd like to invite forward uh, Carrie Stevens. I know uh, last week we had shared all that had happened at annual conference. Um, Carrie was actually in Costa Rica last week, um, and so she wasn't here. Um, but uh, I just wanted to share with you all, um, we shared what happened at the annual conference and the steps that we continue to have as uh, a conference and a denomination to go. Um, but uh, lost in all of that was the fact that Carrie, among all of her colleagues as well, um, met all the requirements with their respective boards and all the steps along the way. Folks have been affirming them and celebrating them. And I mentioned to you uh, that um, Carrie is not going anywhere. We are still very proud uh, to have Carrie here serving at Skycrest. Um, I've heard from so many people the way that your lives have been touched by Carrie. I know without trying to speak for her, I'm sure she will say as well, you have touched her life in so many ways. And so this is a chance to celebrate as well uh, the work that God has done in her life and in this relationship together. Um, and so um, many of you had been uh, lifting up Carrie throughout her ordination, or um, commissioning process as she was turning in paperwork. Um, here at Skycrest, we have, um, you know, clergy wear robe. I know uh, the, the choir folks and, and directors wear robes as well, um, but this is something we do. We preside over various services, and historically, deacons uh, have worn white, and uh, elders wear black, uh, but here at Skycrest, we wear multiple things for multiple occasions. Um, so Carrie has a white robe, um, but um, I wanted to share with you that actually we took up an offering and are proud to present you uh, with this gift for you to be able to pick out a robe um, that you would like, a uh, black robe, so that uh, whatever the occasion is that you, you have that, but just want to let you know, and I know it's not just about this, but we want you to know how much you mean to us, how proud we are of you, how grateful we are that you've answered God's call, uh, and just the many lives that you've touched um, in answering that call. So we're excited to see what God has in store for us as a community and for you in these next steps. So let's give it up for Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. It is always uh, a good thing to celebrate uh, the milestones in our lives. Amen? Um, as a church, we need to be lifting those up. So Carrie, thank you. Church, thank you. Um, let us now go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you today grateful that you are indeed a perfect parent. You have never left us nor forsaken us, and for that, we are eternally grateful. Each of us is here despite all of the busyness going on in our lives. I'm sure we could have found many excuses to say, well, maybe I won't go this morning, and yet you brought us here to celebrate you. And so we thank you for being a good and faithful God. God, thank you for all of the blessings we celebrate in our lives. Thank you for our fathers and our father figures, uh, for those that have uh, been uh, provided care to us, uh, showed us what it means uh, to be present in somebody's life. Um, and God, we ask that uh, in all that we do today, in our worship and our celebration um, of you and the goodness in our lives that you have been to us, uh, may you be honored and uplifted. May this be an offering pleasing to you. We pray this in all things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, at this time, we'll have our Sky Kids moment on the screen. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all of you out there who are dads, who are stepdads, who are father figures. Um, anybody who fits into that realm, grandfathers, anybody, happy Father's Day. I hope you feel so celebrated and appreciated today because you deserve it. Um, it is so good to be in worship as always. My name is Carrie. I'm the Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry here at Skycrest. And I've got your kids moment. So kids, get those listening ears on. This part of the service is just for you. And I have to confess something to you all. I've done it again. I am not someone who is good at caring for plants. Uh, you can see like this plant is really dead. Uh, this plant was given to me by someone. Um, and it's, it, it's even a plant that doesn't require a lot of water um, or care or attention and yet still uh, it's really dead. I, I have failed uh, in caring for this plant. Now, 
this is pretty sad. I have to say, this is pretty sad. And then I was thinking about, you know, I have a hard time caring for one plant. Then I was thinking about lots of other plants that exist in the world. And my mind immediately went to these giant trees. Now, these are redwood trees. Um, I've never seen them before, but this is like a bucket list item for me to go and see these huge, huge trees. You can see like there's a person right there. That's a whole entire person. And you can see how big those trees are. These are just like unfathomable to me. You can see how green the leaves are, how strong the trunks are. Like these are some plants. These are some well cared for plants. Unlike my sad uh, little potted plant, unfortunately. Now, and that also made me think, you know, these plants don't have anybody who like waters them or cares for them. Uh, I don't even think anybody planted these. I mean, I'm sure like these are just natural, amazing, beautiful trees. So the person who cares for them is God, right? God cares for creation, uh, you know, by providing sunlight and water and all these things. So these plants are really cared for by God. And I think that is incredible because God is a God who not only cares for plants, not only cares for animals, but cares for all of us. In our scripture today, we're going to hear that God gives us everything we need. With God in our lives, uh, with God close to our hearts, we have everything we need to be happy and live a full life. Um, yeah, we don't have to worry about, you know, who's going to take care of us, where is this going to come from, where is that going to come from, because God is a good caretaker. And funnily enough, when we celebrate Father's Day, oftentimes what we're doing is we're celebrating good caretakers. Um, I have a great dad. I was very lucky um, with, you know, my father. He's a fantastic person, has always taken great care of me. Even when I was little and even now, he still takes care of me in some ways. Um, and what a blessing that is. So on this Father's Day, uh, wherever you are on this Father's Day, whatever emotions this Father's Day brings up for you, I want you to focus on who are the caretakers in your life. Maybe it's your father. Maybe you can reflect on how God cares for you. Uh, so as we close our time together this morning, let's say a quick word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for fathers, and thank you for caring for us. In your name we pray, amen. Bye, everybody. Let's continue worshiping with hymn 128, verses 1 through 3 of He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Father. Would you stand?
this time, I invite you uh, to remain standing as we affirm our faith together uh, using the Apostles' Creed. Uh, you find the words on the screen. Uh, they are also in the back of your hymnal. But let us unite now in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. you now to quiet our hearts as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who is our good and perfect parent, we acknowledge today that for most of us, our hearts are full. For some of us, we have just returned from Costa Rica, and although tired and uh, probably physically in need of of getting back into our, our rhythm, we are full of joy and excitement at this past week down in Costa Rica. We are rejuvenated by being a part of what you're doing in that special place. We are excited to reaffirm our commitment to you and to Skycrest here in Clearwater. And for others of us, we are, our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy. Perhaps we celebrate uh, those fathers in our lives, those father figures, those, um, those men who have been um, examples of faithfulness to us. We realize that we serve um, a perfect parent in you, O God. And it's to you that we look for examples and guidance, and yet we are grateful for those earthly examples here on earth. Now, for some of us, our hearts are filled with anxiety. We've been walking with loved ones through their sickness. We've been nursing loved ones to health. We have um, been concerned for our friends and our family who uh, may be in the hospital, whose health may be declining. Uh, for some of us, our hearts are breaking. Perhaps this uh, Father's Day is not a happy occasion, but a time in which um, we mourn perhaps a relationship that we didn't have with our fathers, or maybe we like for it to have been different. Or maybe this is the first Father's Day without our father. Or as fathers, maybe we are grieving the loss of our children. Um, God, for many of us, our hearts are full of um, uncertainty because we're not sure where to go next or what lies in front of us. We fear about financial worries or uh, relationships in our lives that um, may be in a rocky place. God, for this, and as well as those prayer requests that are known only to you, 
that we've not shared with anybody but you. God, we are grateful that you hear us. We do ask that you continue to fill us with hope. Hope that you will not leave us nor forsake us, as Scripture tells us. Hope that you will provide for us even when we can't see a way forward. Hope that you will nourish and strengthen us. Hope that you will sustain us as we go on our way. God, we know as we look back over our lives that one thing is certain, and that is that you have never left us. So may that fill us with resolve moving forward that each step we take, that we are closer to being the people you have called us to be. As your church, God, raise us up that we may be lights to those around us, and sometimes even those amongst our ranks here at the church, that we may be able to remind one another that they are not walking this journey alone, that whatever they face, it's not too big for God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for creating us, and thank you for sustaining us. We pray this in all things, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, who taught us to pray his prayer, which we say together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
a special reminder. All good gifts cometh from the Lord. Thank you for reminding us of that today. I'm biased in that I get to hear every Wednesday uh, those songs, and so I'm tapping my foot and singing along. I'm butchering the words, so thankfully they hear you and not me, but thank you for that beautiful reminder. Over the course of my life, I have been given many names uh, that I answer to. Pastor, husband, Ryan, which my kids have started calling me, which is kind of weird, son, brother, and perhaps some other names that might be left out of this sermon today. But I'll tell you, on July 11th, 2016, I donned a new one, and that was Dad. And then on June 27th, 2018, and again on July 1st, I can't believe it was July 1st of 2021, that name was reinforced again and again. Owen Franklin, Meredith Ann, and Claire Elizabeth flipped my world upside down. And with that title, everything I thought I knew about life had changed. The way I feel about myself, the way I think about others, certainly the way I view the world has all changed. And logistically, the way I think about things like sleep and patience and survival mode has also changed as well. Since their births, I've thought a lot about a concept that many of you also ponder as well. You don't know what you don't know. As a staff, Joe, I have to laugh because we talked about this as a staff as well as I was transitioning in this role as pastor. This is a truth for all of us, right? Because friends, if we're honest with ourselves, life is not much more than learning as we go. Amen? Whoever said there's a manual for it? Well, they're true in that there's a billion of them on sale at Amazon. But all of us are just learning as we go we go. We really don't know what we don't know. And I'll tell you, these almost six years have been a whirlwind for Kristen and I, filled with feelings of both elation and desperation. And throughout this time, we continue to come to terms with one very important fact. We had no idea back then what we know now. We had no clue how much love we could feel for another human being. We thought we had an idea when we got married, but then it looked different. We had no idea how frustrating communicating with children can be. (laughs) Especially when you break the rule that you never reason with a toddler. I do it every time, and I lose every time. We couldn't comprehend how much fear accompanies the introduction of a child into the world. Or for those that may not be biological parents, but who have cared for children or grandchildren, or maybe have been a nursery worker or have worked at Sky Kids. You have no idea how much fear accompanies being responsible for somebody else. We had no idea at that time the amount of pride and awe that we could feel after looking at our little ones. For us, now this was our journey. More than any other experience, this journey has shown me the contradictory nature of life. Because friends, we all know life can be both joyful and difficult. It can be exciting and terrifying. Terrifying. And every emotion in between. And that's before we even get to the dreaded middle school years, which everyone tells us are coming rapidly. My time as a parent has prepared me to expect the full breadth of the human experience, the highs and the lows, the everything in between. Those three have been our joy. They have been our responsibility. And we get to walk through life with them. And this is true for both biological parents as well as uh, step-parents or those who simply get to be father or mother figures, grandparents, in somebody else's life. Really, even beyond being around children, I think if you've spent any significant amount of time in life at all, you know the truth that life is all over the place. 
It's almost like, I don't know if we have any tennis fans here, but it's almost like being a spectator at a tennis match. This thing goes on, and then this thing happens, and then we're watching back and forth. And just when we think we've seen it all, the crowd oohs and ahs because something different happens. And what complicates is that each of us experiences something different. So we've all seen that life is up and down and left and right and everywhere in between. So you may be asking, what am I supposed to make of this life when its experiences are as varied as the amount of atoms that make up our creation? Well, friends, perhaps more than any other document or writing that I know of, today's scripture encapsulates the many facets of life. The 23rd Psalm is one of the most well-loved passages in Scripture, and it chronicles the changing perspective of a very odd character, a sheep. The sheep in our Scripture walks through many different experiences and takes us on a journey with them. From thanksgiving to desperation to hope, this six-verse chapter perfectly articulates the human experience for us. So friends, for the next three weeks, we are going to be journeying with the psalmist through this chapter in a series we are calling The Lord is My Shepherd. Each week, we're going to walk through a different section of the scripture, exploring more of the fullness of God's presence with us throughout life. So with that, I invite you to pray with me. God, we are grateful to you, our good shepherd, and ask that as we hear your word read and proclaimed, that you would work Do a mighty work in each of us. Illumine our hearts, O God, to take in the words of your scripture that we might look more like who you have called us to be. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to read the full scripture, um, and then we are going to put up the first three verses after that for you to follow along. Uh, But if you have your Bibles with you, uh, we'll go ahead and read through Psalm 23. Uh, Simply listen along, and then we will examine the first three after this. Hear now the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Friends, now for today's scripture, we are going to begin specifically with the first three verses. And I'm just going to, we can leave this up, and I want you to follow along throughout our, uh, the sermon today. He begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, throughout our first months as parents, um, Kristen and I had this weird thing we we ended up doing. We didn't really plan it. Um, We periodically marveled at this rather obvious truth. Uh, Randomly, one of us would look at the other and just say, we've got a son. We're responsible for this human being. Can you believe it? (laughs) And it still happens on occasion, though not as much, that these are our responsibility. These are our children. It's almost as if we need to remind one another of our joint responsibility. And we do that by proclaiming it. Some of you may have that as well, whether it's with children or with something else. We celebrated Carrie today. I can remember when I was ordained and I had multiple moments when I thought, oh my gosh, Uh, this is for real. (laughs) I'm ordained. Or if you have uh, a company you are overseeing or uh, a club that is uh, sort of your um, labor of love that you are a part of, your passion project, uh, something that you are a part of, there's something that happens when we proclaim it, when we stand behind it with our words. So in our scripture, David the psalmist actually begins by proclaiming out loud that he has a shepherd. 
I don't know if any of y'all have experience with shepherding or know any shepherds or anything about uh, tending to any animals, because I didn't and still don't. Um, But this shepherd's job is to tend to the sheep. And I think those words, tend to the sheep, you know, we've been doing a lot of job interviews, so my mind goes to that phrase, other duties as assigned. There's a ton of things that encapsulate tending the sheep, watching over them, protecting them, transporting them. If they're sick, nurturing them back to health. If they are, uh, if it's a mother sheep who is giving birth, usually the shepherd is helping the sheep to labor. So where the sheep are, the shepherd should be. In fact, the survival of the sheep depends on it. Now, scholars have often noted the dirty nature of shepherding, that sheep just get into all kinds of things, and it makes sense, right? And if the shepherd is with the sheep, it stands to reason that the shepherd is going to get pretty dirty as well. All of the grime they've accumulated, all of the stuff they get into, you can use your imagination, all of the wandering that they do, the shepherd is going to be close to them, picking them up sometimes, walking with them, staying among them. In fact, uh, a commentator once wrote, I think this is brilliant, they wrote that a good shepherd will begin to pick up the scent of the sheep. A good shepherd will begin to pick up the scent and the sheep. And that is both beautiful and gross. <laughs> and so friends, as, as I want to stop for a moment. As you are thinking about your life as a sheep, on your journey, walking to wherever it is that you walk, getting into whatever it is that you are getting into, knowing that you have a shepherd that follows you closely, I want to ask, what does your shepherd smell like? What does your shepherd smell like as a result of the places where you go? The activities in which you are involved, the things that you are doing. Perhaps some of us might be listening this morning and thinking, I might need to change my smell. I might need to alter the things that I'm doing or the things that I'm involved in because I don't like the aroma that it's bringing. I want my shepherd to have a different kind of smell. So that's just something to think about as we put ourselves in the perspective of the sheep. So not only does David say he has a shepherd, but he says his shepherd is the Lord, the one who created everything, including the sheep. So as he said, the sheep has nothing to fear. The sheep will forever have someone whose sole job it is to look after them. So before we go any further in this whole series... David wants us to know that we have a shepherd. Are you with me? Okay, we have a shepherd. Next verse is, He makes me lie down in green pastures. If you were to think, why might a sheep go to a pasture? Anybody care to venture a guess? Why might a sheep go to a pasture? To eat? Yeah. That's the main reason, right? That's the main course. (laughs) They go to eat. But not just that. They also go uh, to rest. They go to take time, you know, because sheep, I imagine, are being shuttled from one place to another, and you've got that staff, which we'll talk a little bit later uh, in the series, kind of telling them to go this way or that way, and so they've got a lot of movement. Do you notice David said he makes me lie down? Is there anybody in here who just needs to lie down and be still? Maybe physically, but for many of us, it's also metaphorical. Some of us have a hard time sitting in what we have. But as the sheep goes to eat, the shepherd makes it lie down, be present with the provision. See, friends, that is the main reason the sheep goes to the pastures, is to eat. We know the power of food. It fills our body with the energy it needs. If we've ever been without food for a long time, it restores us back to ourselves. I think about that Snickers commercial a few years ago. You may have remember that where you see a very well-known person and they start talking, but the voice coming out doesn't sound like them. And I'm probably going to butcher it, but essentially it says you're not yourself when you're hungry. Or you may have heard the term being hangry, hungry and angry as a result. I've been there many times. When you're in that state, 
you're not really able to concentrate on the things around you because your basic needs are not being met. And so when we are fed, when we are filled with what we need, we are able to put proper things in their proper places. And now with my little ones, I've seen what it looks like when my sheep have had a good feeding. If you've ever uh, been around infants, um, many of you will know when they've had a good feeding, whether it's nursing or a bottle, uh, because the eyes start to blink really slowly. The arms will start to relax back. We, there were a couple times we would hold Owen up like this because he was out. Um, and that communicated to us he was so filled with what he needed that his body could only be present with it. He couldn't do anything else. John Wesley defined green pastures as being the place, quote, where there is both delight and plenty of provision. So taking that image of an infant who has had a full belly, I want to challenge you all that that is the look we should have when feasting upon all that God provides for us. So overwhelmed with it that we can do nothing but sit in that provision. Take it in. Our body oftentimes has to adjust. So Skycrest, I want to ask you to think about where have you been provided for by God? Where are those green pastures in your life where you are poured back into, given what you need? Because friends, the shepherd is always aware of the sheep's need, even before the sheep can express it. So the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. The next one, he leads me beside quiet waters or still waters. There's a book that I've got on my shelf, although I have not read it yet. Uh, the book is called Blue Mind, and the entire premise behind it is that there are studies that measure the physiological changes that happen to a person when they are on or around or above or near or under water. There are measurable positive effects that water has on our lives, and I think most of us would attest to that, right? especially here in Clearwater, where we don't have to go more than 20 or so minutes. And there's something about the rhythm of the waves crashing in. Even if you're not a beach person, there's something alluring about the water. Dipping your toes in it. Being near that. Marveling at the vastness of creation. You see, in water, the sheep is given the refreshment that it needs. We all know the effect that cool water has on a hot day, amen? We've had plenty of those. We are rejuvenated in the water. Now, of course, water is also a time for the sheep uh, to allow all of the dirt and the grime and the dust that they accumulate from all of their journey to wash away from them. That's where the shepherd cleans the sheep with the water. It's a reminder that there is more underneath the filth that we accumulate. All that we're involved in in our lives does not define who we are. So I want to ask, can you think of a time when you were brought to the quiet waters? Perhaps even if it was during a time of great chaos. Where do you experience peace in your life? Because, friends, the shepherd is a restorer of souls, as what David tells us. And it is through uh, the green pastures, but more importantly, through the quiet waters where we are rejuvenated. Finally, David says that the shepherd leads the sheep in right paths for his name's sake. Now, what I love about that is that there are two components to what the shepherd is doing. The shepherd is leading the sheep, but doing so on right paths. That's something that I think we often overlook. Because a lot of times it just takes courage to lead. But it takes courage and a good moral compass to lead down the right paths. And so what's implied in this is that the shepherd, not only is the shepherd in charge, but the shepherd knows the way to go. I mean, think of the trust that's there between the sheep and the one looking after it. 
The sheep doesn't second guess the shepherd's capability to guide because the shepherd proves themselves trustworthy over and over and over again. This is a shepherd who doesn't just guide the sheep, but does so on the right paths. I want you to think back on your own lives, friends. Perhaps there was a decision you were staring down that caused you great anxiety. Perhaps it affected your whole family. Maybe it was at a crossroad for your career or where you were living or what you were going to be doing with your life. And I'm sure you wondered which step to take because you wanted to take the right one. And I pray that looking back, you were able to see that the shepherd indeed knows the way, even when we don't. So what I love about these first verses really is that David is painting a picture of a caretaker who provides for every need imaginable. There's nothing the sheep could want or need that the shepherd isn't already aware of and providing for. So any similar experience we have in our lives, whether it's providing for a child or a grandchild or uh, being a ment- uh, having a mentee, for example, in a mentor relationship or something else that you are involved in caring for another, all of those things point us back to this good shepherd who first provided for us. So as much as we want to care for the little ones in our lives, in our church, in our community, How much more does our shepherd want to care for us? Friends, as you leave today, may you be filled with awe at the love of our good shepherd. May it lift your spirits and illumine your paths as you journey on. Let us pray. Oh God, you indeed are our good shepherd. We take a moment today and throughout the week moving forward to take stock of all you have given us, to just notice all of the things that you have provided for us. Make us grateful and transform us through your love and grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Let's close our time together with hymn 170, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Please. As a reminder, friends, um, if you are planning on coming to the Father's Day movie night, please let Carrie know, or you can let me know so we can make sure we we plan for it. And then um, I hope to see you all uh, not only next week, but plan to be at the farewell celebration after service on the 26th.